Morning, it's Andre, and well, look at this. We got a Friday flying update, finally. Yeah, it's been just a little busy. Uh, the run up to Flight Fest and then Flight Fest, and then we had a family wedding. So my Fridays were kind of, well, chewed up. So here we go. We got one finally. And now the first thing we're talking about is Flight Fest, and what a spectacular event. Um, down in Ohio, that was about a 900 kilometer, nine and a half hour, 10 hour, 11 hour drive, depending on uh, the, the conditions. Um, I went down on Wednesday before to help set up with uh, Fred Flying Monkey, hi Fred, I, and all the other guys, and it was just really nice to actually touch base with people one on one again versus the online community. I love social media and that, but nothing beats getting together and talking with everybody. I uh, got to shake the hands of Josh Bigsler and Alex and Austin, Jen, Lindsay, and the whole flight test crew, Peter, and just had a, a phenomenal experience. I mean, we worked hard. The volunteer group just, you know, put their hearts and soul into it. Hi, Fred. Um, and, you know, the conditions weren't fantastic with the rain in the field and everything and we just the parking crew just stepped up and I worked really hard Saturday to make sure everything was just right on and had a fantastic time doing it I was worn out and tired by the time I got home uh, but just had a lot of fun um, flew as many planes as I could the yes the FT racer did fly no it did not retire no it did not die and no Ryan didn't steal it um, but it was uh, still really fun to get it out I'm looking forward to the photos of it flying I did fly the uh, the fun cub and actually Chris and Wayne had a chance to get him fly this one Chris owns one but just hadn't flown in a couple of years and Wayne hadn't uh, ever experienced it I want to put more LEDs into it and go flying at night again with this thing that's all it needs just a couple more strips and it will be perfect um, there were a couple hiccups though for me while flying at Flight Fest um, the worst was the Sky Mule uh, I'm not 100% certain as to what happened or why it happened but Oh boy, soy fields are, are tough. And, you know, I have to hold it upside down. It kind of just tore the poor plane up. It, it took off, we did a hand toss, and it was flying, and then I just started having issues. It felt like the ailerons just weren't responding, and I tried to level out, and I didn't think it was gonna be that bad. And it isn't that bad, it is very repairable. I just have to sit down and do the man hours behind it and repair it, but boy, that soy field just ripped it up. I have got some wing tubes coming in for it because the aluminum tubes got a little beat up. The wings are fine and everything, and it's just that crack. I have treated it a little bit with uh, some hot water and everything, and then I'll have to get in there and glue the, the nose section back together, and it will be fine. I mean, it's a tough bird. And, uh, you know, the, the front end took a bit. The damn motors are fine. All the controls are fine. I'm not 100% certain what happened. I did switch from the 9X to the uh, to the FR Sky Radio, so maybe something happened there. So I will investigate and go from there. And then the only other issue I had was I had wrapped the, uh, the wing for the EFX Racer up, and I guess the car got really hot, and this aileron... Uh, warped really really badly this is actually after a couple days of me working on it trying to get it back straight you can see the heat bubbles and everything in the skin and that's just from the heat from the car so I almost wish I'd put this thing in one of those sleeves instead I think that would have protected a little better obviously the wing got set so I'm gonna heat this up again and I've been using some painter sticks and clamps uh, if you've seen on the social media photos to bring it back it's almost back together um, once another one's available for order from Hobby King when they restock it, I will pick up another one um, and, and go from there. And I'd almost consider buying a fuse for the fun, uh, sorry, the, uh, the Sky Mule, but it's fixable and we'll go from there. So that's the only bad one. Uh, the Radian flew and it was phenomenal. Uh, after 45 minutes, we were all exhausted. We flew Friday. And after all that time, it was the, we, we landed, went, whoo, what, what we discovered, would you have about six seven eight nine a radian uh and gliders in the air they all look black <laughs> so we're sitting there going yeah i'm not taking my eyes off my plane and you know once in a while you sit there and call out crazy ivan and do a little wiggle with your aircraft just to make sure you're tracking yours but the video is phenomenal it is on my youtube page it's a little glitchy i'm not sure why uh but after this point you get the point you see fury field in all its glory and you see all the straw and, and bales of uh, straw that we've been placing down to keep everything awesome and, and, and flowing. The next step for the Radian is um, ta-da, 600 milliwatt, 148 view, 32 channel, 
uh, FPV rig and I've got a spare canopy this is actually the old original one and I think I'm gonna put the camera somewhere and stick the antenna up I gotta test all that out but that's what that's for so I can go flying um, and I did get a couple of Hobby King orders while I was out um, I did pick up the new head tracker woo 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 sorry Oy. <laughs> Take two. I did pick up the new uh, Quantum 2 head tracker compared to the old one. Uh, there's a significant difference. There's a little remote clicker and all the wiring, everything's cleaner, and this has a USB interface. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with this one. If anyone wants to buy it off me for 10 bucks, give me a holler. Um, but this one will do a really nice job. Uh, again, just one of those things. I decided that if I was going to do it with the 180 pen and tilt and everything, uh, we'll, we'll keep going and pursuing that because I still like to have the 180 uh, in the Bixler and in the Wraith. Uh, speaking of the Wraith, hmm, yeah, I got some repairs to do on the Wraith. I've actually ordered some new uh, um, 40 amp ESCs. Uh, the real nice thing about going down to uh, uh, Flight Festival is I had a chance to talk with Matt from Stone Blue. Um, Alex for my uh, you know video aerial systems and even uh, Ian Dunlop though from the Dunlop brothers about the uh, Spectre slash Wraith. <laughs> Alex basically said you've got to keep plugging away and make the dual prop work. Uh, what we figured out and what we think because it flew fine last year the only thing that's changed from then was the ESCs. I put in some newer uh, uh, Turnergy uh, or a Hobby King 35s so I've ordered some 40s because that's what the 1400 motors are spec for. So they should be in next week. I'll re-glue the nose and we'll take it back basic and then bring it back up to full uh, FPV status. I'm going to put some reinforcements in a few spots and just keep flying. But it was, it was just awesome talking to everybody and, you know, and Alex being very insistent that I not change anything and just keep plugging away at it or keep revising it and, and improving it. So the other thing that will happen with the airplane is Matt was showing me the for the uh, Spectre, which is the pusher design, he had built a little fin. Uh, it's a hand strike protector for the prop. And he says, why don't you try and make a couple of those for your front booms and see if you can prop up your motor so you, snap, you stop snapping props. So I will try and do that. So um, the other item that came in with the Hobby King order was a cute little four channel receiver. You know, they're eight bucks on sale, it's so tiny. So that's perfect for a lot of things. I'm actually very slowly moving away from the Turner G9X. Nothing wrong with it, but one less module. And if I can pick up a receiver for eight bucks and a few other little ones. So I've got another one coming in just to have it on stock. And I'm actually using one of the um, clones I picked up on the quad. I was testing that. And yeah. um, so my little 250 was, I was bombing around this afternoon. It was just, you know, it was nice to get out. And I kept having issues with it the craft wouldn't level and what I determined was I think you can see it in one of the other ones um, all the mounts after a year of bashing around uh, there's really cheap aluminum they basically have come apart so these 1900 kV motors there's nothing wrong with them and they actually work really well I mean it's not I'm not racing a thing I'm just bombing around the backyard doing FPV but unfortunately when I throttle up they would pitch and pull because you know nothing is straight and level anymore so uh, I've ordered some 23s they're on sale Hobby King's got a big sale so I punched in for those and uh, a few of the little odds and ends so I, it'll be nice to have this aircraft back together because I just got in well actually while I was away um, these are the hard props those unbreakable ones from secure cam uh, compared to the you know gem fly uh, gems you know bong bong they just bend I mean those ones will bend like anything there these ones I've clipped the side of the deck already when I was testing it I got a few flights but I said like I said as, as I started pushing it you know, they started lifting off, and uh, so anyhow, I've, I've got to get different motors that uh, sit into the base, so I'm hoping the new ones will do that. Um, so, that one's in order, and yeah. Oh, oh, oh you're looking over here, aren't you? <laughs> so, Chris was walking by myself, and we, we found this, this bloody wonder in, in a garbage can at, at Flight Fest. And I said, oh, cool, I've always wanted to build one of these up with a pod, you know, and just fly it normal. And then I started looking at my EDF project and went, huh, hmm, huh. So, this is going to be, uh, I think we're just going to call it bloody hell. <laughs> so, uh, it will fit, a, uh, I'm just going to put a little bit of a bottom under there, not even need a pod, and just set it all up with the ESCs and the battery and so on. Uh, a 3S4000 just happens to fit inside there just fine. 
uh, throw on some servos and set it all up and we're ready to play. I mean, it's got a few little dings and duh, but whatever. Someone threw it away. <laughs> you know, what's that saying? One man's trash, another man's uh, treasure. So we'll have some fun, check it out, see what it does. I've never flown one of them, but they look pretty interesting. And hey, if throwing some EDFs, it should sound like a blast. So, <laughs> big breath. There you go. Another fantastic Friday flying update. I hope to get out uh, to do some flying. Actually, the FT guys and I, or the After Hour guys, we're going to do a... We've done a podcast. It should be released very soon talking about uh, the um, experience. I'm sorry if I didn't mention everybody's name. Josh, uh, Dan, everybody. Ashbourne, uh, Mike, uh, Ryan, your his son Seth everybody ed wendy just oh it was such a phenomenal personal experience getting to meet everybody who came up who, who uh, said oh my you're andre from the fight uh, from the podcast and just what an honor what a privilege and everything so again thank you have a wonderful weekend fly safe have fun cheers